Well, John, most Cobblers fans will know the name Walter Tool through the memorial at Six Fields and maybe even that he played for the Cobblers, but he was a remarkable man who achieved such a lot in a short life. So what can you tell us about him? I think you're right with that, that word, Gareth, remarkable. Um, West Indian father, English mother, but both died when he was really very young, so he was orphaned. But I think he had a certain toughness and resilience, and that came through uh, when he went to school and he started being a, you know, playing sport, cricket and football. And it was at football that he really shone. I think that was one of the things where he really, really came to the fore. Played football at amateur level, but then was spotted by the great Tottenham Hotspur, and he played a few games for Tottenham. He was uh, mixed race, and I think when he was playing, he played once down at Bristol City and he had some racial abuse. Tottenham, he didn't play very many games for Tottenham, just a handful before he then moved on and had a fresh start at Northampton Town. And that's when he joined the Cobblers and that's with, with the start of becoming a Cobblers legend. Yeah, I mean, in terms of his footballing career, he played more than 100 times for Northampton Town. and. Um, Looking at some of the reports and from his teammates, he was highly regarded not only as a man but as a footballer too. Oh, I think so, and and that that's the thing that comes through with some of the re reports. There's no doubt that some parts of some of the crowds were were hurled racial abuse at uh, Walter Tull. But I think it's a mark of the man that he actually overcame that and was re resilient enough to to take that face it head on, if, if you like. There's no doubt that Northampton Town, his his, his teammates actually adored him. They, they adored his style of play, strong, he got a good, uh, good, low, a good range of passing. They, are, they say he could shoulder charge with the best of them, really good shoulder charge. And they, they held him with some degree of affection. And I think, I think Cobblers fans of the time obviously loved him too. And we need to place into context these were different times, there weren't many black players. He, he was a trailblazer, if you like. He, I think, uh, he did blaze the trail. He set the, the standard for all those uh, black footballers who came over the years and I've been speaking to Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank this morning and he said you know his role in football is because of people like Walter Tull and, uh, and, and other black footballers who blazed the trail and went ahead and carried the torch carried the flag if you like uh, and there's no doubt but in terms of that was his football but there was more to come from Walter Tull because of course when war broke out he was one of the first to join what was called the Footballers' Battalion. Now this was a, a, a battalion where people joined together because they were professional footballers. They were urged to join a battalion. Football had had a bit of a bad press at the start of the 1914-15 season because football went ahead when other leagues and other, other sports had stopped playing. There was pressure on to form a football, Footballers' Battalion and that became the 17th Battalion of the Middlesex Regiment. Walter, his number was 55, the 55th person to join the Football Battalion. He was promoted in short order from private to Lance Corporal, Corporal and then to Lance Sergeant. And he fought on the Western Front from November 1915 for about five months until he got what we call combat stress. He came home for four months, went back to the front. But then, and this is a real mark of the quality of this man, is that he applied for and got a commission as an officer in the British Army. This is a, a, a mixed race man, black man, leading white soldiers in battle and that I think speaks volumes here's a man who overcame abuse racial abuse as a footballer overcame mental illness and came back to fight on the Western Front overcame all the prejudices and all the bars for a black man to become an officer in the British Army to lead men into battle and he did this and not only did he lead them he showed that he was very very brave indeed by leading raids and he was recommended by senior officers so Here's a man who's resilient, who's a leader, who cares for the men under him, who has shown that he can break barriers, and I think for that, Cobblers fans and all of us should remember Walter Tull. Just finally, John, that there's no grave to Walter Tull, which is obviously a tragedy, but possibly more important than that, he's, we're 100 years on, his legacy lives on, his memory lives on, and some of the values that Walter clearly had in terms of rising above the abuse, in terms of rising up through the ranks of the army, in terms of gaining the respect and admiration of his teammates, that probably would mean more to Walter to be remembered for that than, than, than any sort of grave or, or, or monument. I think so. Um, to, to, you know, that, the, the, the field where he, he died, uh, in, in trying to defend the line, and he would have been an officer in the forefront of that. I have no doubt that Walter Tull would have been in the forefront of trying to stem that German advance in the German Spring Offensive in 1918. And he fell on the field of battle, and, and his body was never identified. And he's on this 
vast memorial we see behind us here. But I do think he would have wanted to be remembered. Yes, for him being a British officer and leading men in battle, but for all those other obstacles and barriers that he was able to break and that he was able to show that he, as a black man, could succeed as a footballer, as an officer, a man who was fighting for his country as he'd fought for his club on the football field.